and welcome back to another Briar customization video. Today on the chopping block is this Lone Star on the Running Stallion mold. I actually got him from a friend when we were kids, and he has been very loved, so now it's time to give him a new life. Before we begin, just a disclaimer, I am not a professional and this is only my second model horse customization, but I hope you can learn something. In this video I will be repositioning and sculpting. Stay tuned for the painting video. Now for the fun part, coming up with an idea. Making sure to look at real horse references, I decided to do this sort of dramatic pose with the front legs up in the air. I really like this mold's neck, so I will be leaving it untouched, just moving the head down a little bit. I know I want a very dramatic mane and tail with the classic Arabian lift. I use a sketch of the original model and cut it and move it in Photoshop to see how it will actually move when I do it in real life. With that information, I can mark where I plan to cut with a sharpie and get to chopping. I will be using a Dremel 4000 with a thin cut disc. I didn't film this part, but stay tuned because I definitely will in my next custom and I will go into more detail then. Once the scary part is over, here is what we are left with. As you can see, the thin cut is good for slicing. For the main ears, muzzle, seams, and <clears throat> bits, I use a sanding drum. To reposition everything, I will be using my embossing heat gun. I heat up the plastic slowly and hold it back a bit to avoid bubbling. I'm not as careful as I would be on a nicer model, but since I will be doing a lot of resculpting anyway, I'm a bit heavy handed. I use a tub of ice water to dip it into once I have the pose where I want to to freeze it into place. Once everything is where I want it to be, I use my Dremel to do another round of sanding to get rid of wrinkles in the leg joints as well as the strange butt cheeks sticking out. And here's what we've got so far. Before I start bulking the body up, I wanted to put in a base for the mane. This armature will help it be sturdier. I feed the floral wire through some holes I drilled. The hot glue is just temporary until I get my epoxy out. Now I can start adding some aluminum foil inside of the body to give it a base for the epoxy to stick to. I add hot glue to keep it into place as well as to add more precise mass. Now I can start sculpting. I'm using this Aves two-part epoxy. The best tools are silicone so that you can clean them off easily. I'm starting with this poor horse's busted rear. I add the epoxy in bits to fill it out and smooth it with water.
Since I'm making a mare, I add the udders. I make sure to look at photos of horses in a similar pose, as well as illustrations of horse anatomy, to make sure the muscles are in the right spots for the pose. I let some parts harden overnight before continuing to sculpt, since I'm bad about working on a different spot and sticking my finger right into another soft part.
I wasn't liking how the shoulder muscles were coming out, so I drew over a picture in Photoshop to get a better idea. Once I sanded down the shoulder a little bit, I continued sculpting over it, referencing the sketch. So you may be asking yourself, how is this lady going to stand? There will be a lot of frontal weight, so the back legs will have to be very sturdy. I had to just remove the hooves entirely and drill pretty far up into the legs. For the supports I am using some sturdy posts that I cut off of an old lampshade. I had some help bending them since they are so strong. I make sure that they are in the right angle to insert directly down into the base. I want these to really stay in there, so I am using a two part glue for extra strength. And now we let them dry overnight. I made a temporary base that I will do all my sculpting and painting on. I will do a separate base tutorial in a different video. To get the right height so I can sculpt the hooves, I put some beads into the holes. I put down a piece of foil so the hooves won't get stuck to the wood. I use an X-Acto knife for the frog of the hoof and the little hairs.
For the ears, I drill a hole through the head for the wire so that they will be extra sturdy. Face anatomy is extra important, so I make sure to have lots of references. I make sure to stay accurate to the Arabian breed and do a dish-shaped face.
I can make the armature for the main with some floral wire. I bulk it up with some more foil and hot glue. For the hair, I make little snakes and place them how the hair flows. I then blend them together with my silicone tool. For the smaller hair details, I use my X-Acto knife. I then take my brush and run some water over it to smooth it. I plan to have the hair wrapped in vines, so I sculpt the mane to flow like it's being held by them. What you doing? What you doing? I'm trying to scope, Pecan. Oh no. I blame her for why this took so long.
I love adding flowing hairs that come off of the body, but since they are so thin, I make them with wire first so that they have some strength. Arabian horses have a very long bridle path, so I make sure to put in a small bit of mane that looks shaved. I poke the knife in the top to give it the hair effect. To figure out how to bend the tail armature, I drew a basic idea over a photo. I also want to add some roses and vines for some pizzazz, and to make her extra pretty. I did do this part before the mane, so jumping back a bit, here I am drilling a hole the size of the wire I've wrapped. This will be inserted through the whole length of the body for extra support, since the tail will help balance the weight. I make a tailbone and let that harden overnight so I have a solid base to work with.
I can start filling with foil and glue. The little wires poking out will be vines, but in the end I didn't like some of them, so I took some off. I also add some little lead balls into the tail just to help weigh it down a little bit more.
Next, I add the vines in the main. For the roses, I start with a tiny swirl and add on little oval-shaped pieces for the petals. I worry more about the details after I place it since they will be a bit squished in the process. Later on, I take my knife and separate the petals and shape them further. For the leaves, I take an oval and pinch the tip and press my knife into the middle. Lastly, I do some final touch-ups to the face, and once that's all hardened, it's time for primer. I mistakenly did this first layer with some Krylon paint and prime, instead of just the Krylon primer. I had to sand the whole thing off, so definitely don't make that mistake. The acrylic paint tends to beat up on the paint and prime. After many, 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 and probably still not enough time sanding, and using the right primer this time, she is ready for paint. And now for the final reveal. Here's the before. And here's the after. I forgot to film a 360 of the primer, so here's a sneak peek of the first white coat. I'm really happy with how she's looking so far. I've definitely learned a lot in this process, and I hope you have too.
Thank you for watching. Make sure to boop that like button and subscribe to see the painting as well as more projects.